Hi, Kristen. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. Very good to see you. It's just coming up to 6 p 7 p.m. Just PM. you're on Alibad. I can see other people are logging in. Yes, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Yes, you look lovely as always. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. I see you there, Claire, Martin, Ruth. Okay. Very good to have you guys. Very good to have you guys. Let's just give it a minute or so for everyone else to log in and then we'll all get started. Very, very good to see you, Alibads. Hi, hi, Christine. Hi, Susan, how are you? Fine, thank you. Very good to I'm see you. I'm see you. <laughs> Looking in the new year. Asante <laughs> sana, asante sana. I've been looking forward to this. I'm very excited. I'm glad that you guys are here. Yes. Yeah, so let's give it a minute or two for everyone else to log in so that then we can all get started. I'm just allowing a minute or two for everyone to log in so that we all start together. But for those of you who are here on time, it's a very, very warm welcome. Good to see you all. Okay, Joanne, I noticed that. I'm not going to call you Martin. I see that you have logged in on someone else's account. That is all good. It's good to see you all. I see some very familiar faces. I think I'll just stop that and say hi to you guys as everyone else is logging in. Anisia was already talking to me yesterday. Anisia, very good to see you. Very good to see you, Akili. Good to see you people. I see a lot of familiar names here. I see someone already having their hand up. I think it would be a best for us to, so that we are able to manage our time better. It would just be best for us to keep the conversation in the chat. Even as I go along, I'm going to be looking at the conversation in the chat so that that is where we keep it. And so even as you come in, it would be a good idea for you to just keep it mute. I like that everyone is staying mute. That's how we are going to be able to make the best of our time. I'm expecting quite a few more people. So I'm just giving it a minute more so that then we all start together, but it's very, very good to see all of you who are here on time. I know sometimes it takes a sacrifice. It takes you rushing in. It takes you logging in while still in traffic, while still at work, wherever it is you are. It's a very, very good evening from Nairobi. It's a warm evening here in Nairobi. I don't know where you are, what the weather is like. It's a warm evening here in Nairobi. I see you there, Prof. You are not in town. I know it must be slightly cooler there than it is here in Nairobi. We are having a very warm evening and I'm just about to get started. Now would be a good time to pick up a cup of tea. If that's something you like, if you like coffee, whatever it is that works for you, even a glass of wine is nice at this time of the day. So whatever it is that works for you, you might want to pick it up. I intend to do this for just about one hour. I will have a, an opportunity at the end of the presentation for questions and answers. Uh, but in the meantime, you can keep them in the chat. You can keep them in the chat. My assistant is here. Her name is Val. I can see Val is logged in. She will be able to take any questions that I don't might not notice and bring them to my notice, but whatever it is that you put in the chat, I promise to go through it so that then by the time we leave here, all of us will have been satisfied that our questions have been answered. So settle in, pick up a cup of tea. We should be starting in exactly one minute.
All right, those who are logging in right now, it's a very, very warm welcome, very warm welcome. Good to see you. I see some new faces coming in. Esther, I see you there. And the other Esther, Pastor Esther, I see two Esthers who just logged in. Very good to see you guys. Very, very good to see all of you. It's a very, very good evening. I like somebody there whose profile picture is cash. I, it's always nice to see a picture of money, but it's very, very good to see all of you here. It's exactly five minutes past seven in East Africa. I do not want to keep this any longer. I don't want to keep this any longer. So it's very, very good to see you. I'll say I see you there. Very good to see you. Even as people are logging in, I would like to get started already. This is the webinar that I entitled Your Unfair Advantage. And it's my great privilege to have all of you here. If we haven't met already, if you haven't, um, being on one of my events. My name is Christine Wetelli. It's a very, very good evening. Very good to see you. I think I'll just go ahead and share my screen at this point. There you go. I'm sure you can all see that. This is the webinar, Your Unfair Advantage. And even as other people are joining us, I would like to jump right in. Uh, and you're probably wondering, how did you get here? You got here one of the following ways. Either you saw my posts online. I put this out about two or three days ago and said I was going to do a webinar entitled Your Unfair Advantage. So possibly that is where you saw this. Or possibly someone sent you a link. A friend called you and told you this is a good idea. Come listen in. It might be worth your time. So that might be another reason why you're here or you're probably on our mailing list and therefore you received um, an email inviting you to come to this webinar. So whatever way you got in touch with this, whatever means, however it is that you got this, I am very sure that this is a divine appointment. I do not believe that anything happens to us by accident. I believe that you are in the right place at the right time. A lot of times it doesn't look like it. I know that in my life it hasn't looked like it, very many times when I find myself in a situation and I'm like, how the hell did I get here? But it is by divine appointment that you are here. Things work for a reason and we're going to go into the details of that because today I'm going to very uncomfortably draw back the curtains and turn the light upon myself and give you examples out of my own life. Things I've been through, things I've learned so that then we all learn together. I have a principle that I like to call learning aloud because whenever I'm learning it, I am sharing it. Whatever it is that I'm learning, I like to share it. Principally, I do that through my YouTube channel. It's Christine Wetelli at YouTube. And I usually do a video every week where I just share the things that I am learning, where I share what it is that has struck me during that time, or I remember things that have happened in the past or something that someone has said to me. If I'm learning from it, I always figure someone else will learn from it. And that's what I like to call share well, learning aloud. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here this evening. I'm going to be opening up and I'm going to be telling you about my experiences. As my thank you for coming to this webinar, you could have been a lot of other places. You've had a long working day. You probably would have wanted to rest, but you decided to spend your time with me. Some people are joining this. It's early in the morning for them. I know there's someone here who it's early and she's actually driving to work. Mm -hmm. It's early in the morning in her part of the world and she is still here. So thank you so much, everybody who's come. And to say thank you, let me see. Yes, I do have a copy of it here at my desk. I'm going to be giving you the ebook, my book, Play to Win. I will give you a link to download this absolutely free of charge. Some of you will already have it. I've done this many times before. But if you don't have the book Play to Win, this is your opportunity to get it absolutely free. I'll give you the ebook version. And that will happen if you put your name and email address in the, um, in the chat. Put your name, telephone number, and email address. That's the number that I can reach you on WhatsApp. And we are going to be sending you a link to download the book Play to Win. That is just my way of saying thank you for coming to this webinar. All right. Now, being here is proof that you have an itch to scratch. I have a colleague, a mentor, a friend of mine who likes to say, I'm not an entertainer. So if you're here 
It means that there is something you want to learn. It means that you haven't achieved all the things in your life that you plan to achieve. It means that there is a problem you want to solve. It's a good idea for you to remember that all the inventions of the world, all the creations of the world, all the things that have come into the world came in order to solve a problem, in order to meet a particular, to scratch an itch, as I like to call it. A lot of times in our personal lives, the things that we want to deal with will usually be to do with our health, to do with our relationships, to do with health, wealth, and self-expression. You know, what's your purpose in life? What makes you feel fulfilled? Not in any particular order, because these things are personal to all of us, but these are some of the things that will usually cause discomforts for us. Most of the time we have, if somebody ever tells you I'm having all of these challenges, their challenges will often be in one of those areas. So these are some of the things that we're going to be addressing as we go along. Now, let's have some house rules as we go along so far. I like that we are all very, very mute. I like that, thank you very, very much. Now, I'd like you to keep an open mind as we go through this presentation. I would request that you keep an open mind some of the things I'm going to say are going to challenge your beliefs. They are going to challenge your socialization, your upbringing, but don't let that be, don't let that cause you to shut your mind. Possibly there is something I will say that you disagree with. Feel free to let me know about it, but keep an open mind as we go through this. This is not a religious talk of any kind. This is not spiritual at all. I'm not trying to change your set of beliefs or anything, but it would be a good idea for you to just keep an, an open mind. Now you're going to need some stationery. It might be a good idea for you to have a notepad and pen in case you want to take notes at some of the things that we're talking about. I am recording this so you'll be able to replay it if you want to do that after today, but it always helps. I like to do that. I like to think on paper. So even I'm holding a pen and paper. So it helps for you to take notes as we go along. Now, this is not about getting certified for anything. I, unfortunately, our culture is where whatever class we take, whatever we are learning, we are more focused on the piece of paper. This is about you changing your life. This is about you finding and living your authentic life, your authentic self. So don't focus too much on what am I going to get. All right. And so who am I and how did I get here? Like I said at the beginning, I see people are continuing to log in. If we haven't met in the past, my name is Christine Wetelli. The question we want to ask ourselves is how did I get here? How did we all get into this meeting? I did an invite on which I mentioned I was going to be talking about my work, my journey, what that has been like, and my weight loss journey. I am no weight loss expert. This is not a class on weight loss. It's just an example that I'm giving of some of the things I have learned through as I have gone through life. Now, the responses that I got especially from you ladies who are so much about the weight. Everyone said, I'm going to log in just to hear how you were able to lose the kilos that you lost. And so that's what I'm going to be talking about first. Now, this is what jolted me to do this. You've had this say differently by different speakers, but there's a quote that says, to have something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. To do something you've never done, you will have to be someone you've never been. A lot of the times we do the same thing and expect different results. Early in the year is always a good time for us to take a retrospective look at your life. Like I like to look at my life and think, all right, what do I want to do differently? There's just something about the new year. It is, it's just the counting of the years. Yesterday, 1st of December is not any different from 1st of June, but there's a way in which when the year is coming to, a, to, a, to an end, we tend to, you know, like, close and open up ourselves to new ideas and everything. So it might be a good idea now that it's this early in the year for you to look at your life and decide what is it I need to do differently. Because I, if I continue what I have been doing, I'm going to continue having what I have been having. And if I continue, if I need to do something new, I have to be somebody new. So in the two areas I'm talking about, I have had to become another person all together. Now, let me give you a brief on my whole weight loss thing. Uh, like I said, that drew a lot of attention because I said in the video that I had recently shed some 16 kilos. Now, it's not the first time that I am losing weight. I tend to have the kind of body that grows. Now, I have had three childbirth experiences that have resulted in four children. 
And that has meant that I have gained and lost weight over the years. The first time I needed to lose weight. Uh, and I, when I'm talking about these examples, I have, I mean, ladies here, you will understand, I, I have lost and gained weight many times, but I'm talking about those events mm -hmm. where I lost at least 10% 10 of my body mass. That, that I decide is enough, is substantial, and is something that we can talk about. Now, the first time I had children was in 1995, and that betrays the age of my twins, which betrays my age, I'm sure. And as I went, as about, two or so years after that, no, three years, because that was 1998. I remember that's when I was, I, I was jostled by how much weight I had put on. I stepped on a, a scale. The bomb blast had just happened. And so we went to give blood. Uh, as it so happened, I was quite close. Let me not go into the detail of that, but I was quite close to the bomb blast that happened in Nairobi in 1998. And so the following day I went to the hospital to give blood. I had not been on a scale in a very long time and weight loss is very subtle when it comes in. You don't notice it coming in. You start to ignore some clothes in your closet. Ladies, you will be familiar with this. So you don't quite realize you've put on weight until I stand on the scale and I found that I was one kilo below the weight I was when I went into hospital to have the children. Maybe I go into the numbers. I discovered that I was 77 kilos. When I went to have the children, my last weight check as I checked into hospital to have twins was 78 kilos. So I said, whoa, I am my weight plus two people. And that hit me. And so I started to walk. What I figured, I saw a, a magazine article about somebody who had lost 20 kilos walking and I thought, oh, I can walk. And I started to walk and I spent all my free time walking and we'd be going home from work and I would tell my husband, drop me, I'm going to walk the rest of the way. I would walk at every opportunity. I would walk in the field, I would walk to work, I would walk on the road, I would spend Sunday afternoon walking. I didn't keep quite a journal of how much walking I was doing, but I know on the weekend I would walk at least 10, kil 10 kilometers on Saturday and on Sunday. And I ended up within about three months losing 11 kilos. Don't worry, you'll understand where this story is going. I'm trying to show that I have lost weight using all sorts of methods. And so in the year 2000, I had a child again, that was two years after that weight loss process. I had another child and again, gradually I put on weight. I put on weight. And I, that one I ended up losing by fasting. How did I learn about fasting? I saw someone on saying on TV that they had fasted and it's good for your, for your health and it's good for everything. And there was nothing religious about my fasting. I was fasting to lose weight. And so I ate nothing. I chewed nothing with my teeth for 100 days. That started actually in the beginning of a year. And from 1st January, I'd seen this TV discussion mid-December. And so I thought, this is a good idea. Possibly, what, I, what if I do this in January? And from January 1st to, to April 9th of that year, I ate nothing. I would drink stuff. I would drink everything, soup and uji and uh, water and juice and yogurt. Everything that can be drunk, I drank, but I did not eat anything. I ended up losing 19 kilos with that effort. And I was thin for a while, and then I went and had another baby. And once again, I gradually put on weights without noticing that I'm putting on weight and I became a larger person. I remember at one point I lost my mother-in-law. At that time I was already done with having children. And when my mom-in-law passed, she had had a stroke and that jostled me about healthy living. And so for the very first time in my life, I joined a gym. I'm giving you this journey to understand that I have had weight and I have lost weight and I have gained weight and I have lost weight. Now, I had walked to lose weight. I had fasted to lose weight and now I was gyming to lose weight. I was slightly, the one thing I didn't touch during that process was my food. I used to argue with gym instructors. No, the reason I come to the gym is so that then I'm able to eat whatever I want. So I ate whatever I wanted. And like I said, this is not a class on weight loss. I'm not recommending anything. I'm simply giving you the journey that I have been so that you can understand where I've been and where I'm coming from. As we went into the lockdown, I was about 92 kilos. And then I have this habit of giving blood every three months. And so I went to give blood and I stepped on a pair of scales and I said, oh my goodness, I am extremely heavy. 
And I had actually meant to remove the 19 kilos. I just forgot. I didn't want to actually reveal how many kilos I was because that's a lot of kilos. And so I decided that this is not working. I remember at one point I walked. Remember I had walked before and lost weight. This time I walked for three months and lost 400 grams. The next time I went to that particular scale, I had lost only 400 grams. That was very disheartening, very, very disheartening to try and make an effort and an effort and an effort, and then to discover that I've lost only 400 grams. That was very, very disheartening. I finally decided that I needed help. I finally decided that, you know what, everything you know how to do, you know how to drive a car because you were taught to drive a car. Everything which you actually know how to do, you are taught by somebody who knows it. So finally, I found someone who held my hand. And so I signed up for a course and I'm going to go into the details of that just to brief you on how it is that I got the results. So this latest weight loss, I lost 16 kilos and that I managed to do by having attended a particular class that taught me about nutrition and how to do that with exercise and all of that. That is just an exercise. I am sure you can see the pictures on the screen. The big one on the on the left, of course, you can see I had to make that very small. I am not proud of that picture at all, but you can see the change. I decided to get into the exact same outfit. I just forgot to put on the brush, but I had everything else that I was wearing that day. And you can see that change that it was. I really, really love that journey, not because of the, yeah, also because it makes me look better, but largely because of who it makes you be. Remember I said, to have what you don't have, you have to do something you haven't done. And to do something you haven't done, you have to be someone you've never been. I needed to be taught how to do this. I needed to be taught, how are you able to get to your target weight? How are you able to maintain? And what this class was teaching me was permanent lifestyle change. This is not about a quick fix. This is not something that you will have for a short while, and then you will go back to your old lifestyle. So that is the change. Let me leave that for a minute as I sip a glass of water. And then we can now go into the crux of why we are here. That was just one of the examples. And so on example two, we are talking about my career, my journey. I have always been a very entrepreneurial person. I have not been employed for more than 24 months cumulatively in all of my 51 years. I have not earned more than 24 salaries. I have been out doing my own thing for most of my life. Uh, one of the first job that I had was I was a pharmaceutical sales rep at one point. I was, um, it was sales slash, customer care, I used to handle the, the sales uh, within the office. I did not go out and make the, the sale. And so I handled the customers from the office. I learned a lot of names of drugs, rather I memorized them because uh, since leaving the job, I have forgotten most of them. But I did that for nine months some time ago. And then at another time when business wasn't doing so well, I had remember dusting out my CV and finding a job. And I ended up with a uh, a job in a non-profit organization that does adoption of children. And I was there for about a year and a few months. I'm not very sure it was 15 months, but it was a year and a few months. I'm not very sure. I'm not sure that the 15 months is very accurate, but cumulatively I have been employed for right about two years. So I, I do not have a lot of wisdom to give as far as get a job and keep a job is concerned, at least not out of my experience. I, during the job at the adoption agency, I remember thinking I need to leave. I can't do this anymore. I'm not happy here. And it was during that time that I wrote my first book. My first book was called Blossom Recipe for Success. And I came to write that book because because I attended a conference where they said um, that they, I attended a conference and ended up doing a speaker's course. And they said, if you're going to be a speaker, you need to write a book. And at first I dismissed the thought. I did not think I was a prof, you know, an academic or somebody who should write a book. But the thought that got me to think I should write a book was when they said that your book will live longer than you and your book will go farther than you. That's the thought that got me to write a book. That has come true for me. I have since published four books. And if I left planet Earth today, my books would be left here. I've been called by people in countries I haven't been in. I have been uh, contacted by people in you know, the four corners of the world. So I do confirm that your book will go farther than you. 
and especially now that we are even dealing in audiobooks and ebooks and all of that people can learn from you who are all over the world who are literally all over the world so i wrote the first book in the year 2006 and that is technically when i got into the speaking and writing business and training business i ended up launching my company soft skills limited i'm sure you can see from my background soft skills limited that's the company in which i work and i launched that um that's a typo right there. I launched it in 2014. 2014 is when I decided to go on my own. I had been working as a consultant for other training organizations and I decided to launch my own outfit in 2014. The book Play to Win that I offered you at the beginning of this and those who have joined since we have been started, I had said as a thank you for attending this webinar, I'm going to be offering you my book Play to Win uh, the ebook version of this. I'm going to be offering you this. If you just put your name and email address in the chat, I'm going to send you a link to download the book Play to Win Now. Uh, that I wrote the first edition of in 2013. And so all this while I'm doing my training business, all this while I'm getting consultation, consultancy uh, jobs, I am traveling up and down, I am training and all was all right, you know, ups and downs of business, that's all normal. But that was all good until 2020 when COVID hit and my business went to bust, like completely, like today I had a business and tomorrow I did not. It actually took me a while to believe that the world can go into shutdown. Maybe I'm not very imaginative, but I couldn't believe it. I was like, wait, so we are not going to leave the house. Wait, we're not going anywhere. We're not going to work. I was in the middle, literally, of training programs. Now, for you to understand how much I had fallen, I had gone through two years of tough business. And um, if those of you who are in Kenya will know that we had had two elections the same year. And since then, the economy had been a little tough, especially for us who get business from the government and state corporation. And so business had been tough. And so I decided to dip into my reserves. To I launched a new office, got new staff. I was getting ready for 2020. We went into 2020 with a lot of excitement. We were getting all these and we had all this business coming up. We were literally in the middle of training programs when all of a sudden, we stopped going to work. That left me in a very, very precarious position. Very, very precarious position because here I am, I am a mom, my children like food. I don't know about your children, but my children like food and they like this food every day. All these bills, nothing seems to be letting up except the fact that there is no cash coming in. I felt very, very vulnerable. To compound the problem two months into COVID, I had by then, of course, sat out the, the, the deposit on my house, and so I was given a notice to vacate. I was asked to vacate on a notice of three days. You've probably heard me talk about this story before, and I was given a three-day notice to vacate. It was not difficult for me to believe that they are going to evict me because I had seen them evict my neighbor. I was living in a, in a place where we had two houses in a compound. They were owned by but the same company and they had evicted my neighbor. So it was not difficult to believe that I will get evicted. And so I was very, very desperate. I had three days to find a new place to stay. And by a miracle, I was able to find another place to stay because you'll remember that Nairobi is in lockdown at that point. I couldn't even go home to my parents. And so by a miracle, I'm not going to get into all of that, but I was able to come out of that. How did I come out of that? I found someone to hold my hand. Once again, I found somebody who is ahead of me in my area of business because I asked myself a simple question. I'm running a training company. There are thousands of training companies in the country. I'm sure there are millions of training companies in the world. Are all the training companies broke? No. So obviously there is something I'm doing wrong that I need to correct because there's people who actually grew. I know a lot of people who became rich through during the COVID season. So the, the problem was not COVID, the problem was me. The problem is never the economy, the problem was me. The same way I'm saying I had used different, different methods of weight loss and I still kept putting the weight back on. I still kept putting the weight back on. Back on. So the problem was not in the methods of losing weight. I tried the same weight method that I had tried before and it didn't work, meaning there is something I needed to learn. I needed to learn from somebody who is an expert in that area. And so I was able to have my hand held by somebody who has been in the 
in the business longer than me, somebody who knows more than me. Now, I'm giving two examples here of when I have been able to turn my life around. The first one I talked about how I took a class. Now, the class that I took, I'm not looking to advertise them, but the same time when I say to myself, let me have a glass of water here. I'm saying that I had, um, I had the intention. I had the intention of losing weight. And I remember hearing from a speaker, someone that I learned to all the time, I attend his programs online. And he said something, he said, make your goal visible, make your goal visible. And so he said, say for example, and I thought it was odd that he used the example of weight loss because you can have all sorts of, of, of goals. You could want to buy a house, you could buy, buy a car, you could want to move to another location. There's a million different things you could want to do, but he gave the example of weight loss and that caught my attention because I had just been at, um, I had just been in the situation where I showed in the picture where I discovered, oh my goodness, you know, the way you wear a dress you used to wear before and you put it on and you're like, oh my God, I am huge. And so it's during that time and I'm thinking to myself, I need to lose this. And this speaker said, stand naked in front of the mirror. See yourself, not the way you look, but how you would like to be. And that is what I did. I stood in front of a mirror and I looked in the mirror and I did not see my body the way it looked. I looked, I saw the mirror, I saw in the mirror, the body I would like to have. About a day or two later, when I had seen it, when I had internalized it, when in my mind's eye, I had seen who I would like to be, I noticed an email. And this is someone on whose mailing list I am. I received thousands of emails from her. I barely ever opened them. But that day, something made me open her email. And she said she was going to have a class and she was going to be leading people to, to, to lose weight. And I signed up for that program. I say to myself, you know what, I'm going to do this. 1900 ladies, it was a class for ladies, 1900 ladies were in that class. And this is what the trainer said in the first class. Now I'm familiar with that because that is true of every audience that you speak to. If 10% of the people in the audience are listening to you, it's a good day because majority of people don't listen. Why don't they listen? I don't know, they're just human. 90% of the people who are listening to me even now are not going to implement the things I'm going to say. But as a speaker, you say to yourself, I'm doing this for the 10% who will. And so she comes into the first class and she says, a lot of the people who will come on this program will sign up, will pay, but will never even attend the classes. And then there is the other group who will attend, but they won't follow what we are doing. And I saw that happen because even during when we were having the classes, our instructions were to plan our meals because she gave guidelines. She did not tell you what to eat because the audience was quite literally from across the world. She could not tell you what to eat in your culture, in your, in your part of the world, you eat different things. So she just gave guidelines for breakfast eat this for lunch eat this for snack eat this and she would say take a picture of your food and people would take a picture of exactly what she said don't eat now those fell in the category that she was saying she said some will pay and not attend i sell training for a living and i know that a lot of the people who pay up for a training they never even download the workbook they never even attend the class I know that January is the month when gyms make the most money because people sign up for gyms and they never ever attend. So that is true of human nature. That is just who we are. So she said this, those who will attend and not follow through, but a few of you will actually lose weight from this program. When she said that I sat upright. I said, if only one person is going to lose weight from this class, I'm going to be that person. If only one person is going to benefit from this program, I'm going to be that person. I made a determined decision. I said, I'm going to lose this weight. I'm going to make the permanent lifestyle change that she's talking about. And so I swore, and indeed I did. I have, it took me three months to share the 16 kilos that I did. That was about six or seven months ago, and I am still here, and I'm still going strong. I have not changed the lifestyle. 
that she recommended. So how did I get into this program? I had a brainwave. Somebody said something that clicked, like I went within and we're going to be going into the details of all of that. Now, about my journey, I say that um, I had been in business all this while and then it went past. And in 2020, about July, I was offered a program. It was called the Wealth Messenger Program. You will be familiar with that, some of you who are here because I have been talking about it ever since. I'm still involved with that program. That program costed 15 hundred pounds. Please notice that those are not dollars, those are pounds. It's a, the company that sells this program is based in the UK and they would sell this program at 1,500 pounds. That is at least 200,000 shillings. I'm hearing this at a time when I have just suffered an eviction notice. I have had no revenue whatsoever for three months. Where was I going to find that kind of money? The trainer, the coach, the person with whom I was working made me a challenge. He said, I'm going to give you this program at $500 if there's 10 people in the class. Because for, for it to be worth my time, there needs to be at least 10 people paying $500. I did both things. I found nine people and I found $500. Later on in hindsight, I thought to myself, why didn't I find 500 people? Because it's, the, it's just the number that I put out there. I was told minimum 10. I found nine and including me, we were literally 10 in the class. We were literally 10. And I have seen someone here who was in that first class. She can confirm that we were 10 in the first class and we paid $500. How did I do it? I had a brainwave. I was sleeping in the middle of the night and I thought to myself, at that point, there's one lady who had told me, Christine, let's go into this class. So there's one person who had told me she was coming to the class. She had been following my, my social media and she knew who I was and what I was doing. And I told her, oh, I'm just going into this program. And she said, I would like to come. So we were two when I began. And the brainwave that hit me was do a video. You're always doing videos. Why don't you just do another video and ask in the video who would like to take a class with me? I don't know if you can see the screen I took this screenshot here. I put this video on all my social media. I put it on uh, Facebook. I put it on YouTube. And if you can see on this screenshot, that video had 213,000 views. It's a video, it's the, the content I've ever done that had the most views. I took massive action. That, of course, it went viral. It went out of my hands. It's completely went viral. I asked myself many times because I do videos every week, what was different about this video? I allowed myself to be vulnerable, which is what I'm doing here today. Talking about myself is not a comfortable thing. I'm African, I'm a woman. We are not raised to turn the attention to ourselves. But if what I have been through can teach another person, I have a mentor and a teacher who says that your experiences were not given to you for you. If my experiences can teach another person, it's worth my embarrassment. It's not easy for me to stand here and tell you that I was broke. It's not easy for me to tell you that I was evicted out of my house. It's not easy for me to talk about these things that I was this and I even show you a picture of me barely fitting in my dress. None of this is comfortable. But if this is going to help somebody else, then I'll go through it again because my experiences were not given to me for me. So the reason that this video did so well, I think, was because I was totally authentic. But what did I do? I stayed faithful. I, I followed the hunch. I followed the, um, I see a typo there. I meant to say a brain wave. There's a, there's a typo there. I meant to say I got a brain wave. Yeah, because I got the idea why don't I do a video about, because I'm always, I'm already doing videos. My videos actually got regular. I had started to do videos about five years before, but my videos became regular during the lockdown because anyway, I was at home. So I started to, so just got the idea. Why don't I use a video to call out? And I, when I did this video, I called about, and for some reason, the people who came through were ladies. The first class was completely ladies. Later on, we had this class 
uh, with gentlemen in. We are still running that class. We've been running it. We've had 14 classes so far, but and we've had many men come through. But at the beginning, it was absolutely ladies. I possibly I think my 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 brand my 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 presentation attracts more ladies. So the first class had ladies. So how was I able to do that? I did that because I followed. I went within. I followed my brainwave when I got. Um, I felt in my spirit that this is the right thing to do. And it proved indeed to have been the right thing to do. Because what I learned in that class is what I have been able to use to grow my business afresh. What was, if I'm going to summarize in one word, what do I do differently in my business now is I introduce the online aspect of my business. Because before then, all I did was I trained people physically. I, I organized trainings from all around. I organize training. I have a, a, a whole database of training uh, specialists of different areas. And so I organized live events. That is what I would do at the time. So what changed from what I learned is how to take my business online. How did I learn to do that? I had someone hold my hand. Like I said at the beginning, and I see a lot of people have continued to join as we've gone along. I'm talking about how you will not improve any area of your life unless you, know, you get somebody to show you how. The difference between where you are and where you want to be is knowledge. I remember a conversation I had once we were, we were, we had some friends over and news was going on and you know that news is bad news. And so they were showing, um, there must have been a drought at the time and they were showing some people from Northern Kenya and they were very, very thin and frail and they had no food and they were starving. And I'm sure those pictures are familiar with you. Very, very thin lady trying to nurse her child and the baby is looking so thin. You're very, very familiar with these ones. And that is what um, we were watching. And I remember saying just, making conversation and saying, Eva was the one who was born in this place. I would wake up and strap my baby on my back and I would walk all day. Then I would sleep under a tree and the next day just walk on until I come to a better place. And something that a friend of mine said that evening has always stayed with me. He said, no, you wouldn't because you wouldn't know to do that. It's not a function of intellect. He told me, why aren't you a billionaire? Because you don't know how to be a billionaire. The difference between where I am and where I'd like to be is knowledge. So the way I get to where I would like to be is I close the knowledge gap. So whatever it is you would like to learn, whatever it is you would like to do better in, find a way to learn what you don't know about it so that then you can, you can improve. Sorry for the marks on the screen, Zoom as this way of... Uh, of making marks and actually those can be made by me or by someone else so i hope no one is scratching my whatever i can see some marks so in summary i did three things one i accepted and took full responsibility for my situation you will never improve anything that is not your fault you will never improve anything that is not your doing Remember we talked about the areas that you might want to improve and some people have joined, so maybe I'll just recap those. We said you might want to be changing the area of your health, the area of your wealth, the area of your relationship or the area of your fulfillment in life, your self-expression. If any of those areas have a gap and you'd like to improve your life in any of those areas, you have to first of all accept and take full responsibility. The reason I was overweight was my fault. It's not my genes, it's not my mother, it's not my food, it's not the food industry, it's none of that, it's not advertising, it's not any of those, it's me. The reason my business had gone bust, the reason I was not able to fend for my children was something that I had done. It had or neglected to do. It had nothing to do with my marriage breaking down. It had nothing to do with my job being this and that because I'm the one who is responsible. Take full responsibility for your situation. Lose the blame list. Lose the blame list. The next thing I did was I asked for help. That takes humility. A lot of the times the problems we have are our problems because we are not humble enough to ask for help. We are not humble enough to say, I would like to take this course, but I don't have 1500 pounds. Is there another way we can do this? Be humble enough to ask for help. But then after that, you have to be willing to take radical and massive action. There's a lot of things we don't have because we won't do. 
I, I have a talk and I have given it in many, many places that is entitled From Knowing to Doing. There's a lot of things we know which we are not doing, a lot of them that we know how to do, except we are not doing them. If we would just take action, I would rather even you take action and have the action be wrong, then you just keep on getting ready to get ready, getting ready to get ready. There's a lot of resolutions that we make during the year. I actually don't quote unquote make new year resolutions. I don't because whenever I have decided enough is enough, it didn't matter which month it was, I just turned around and I did things differently. If you forget everything that I'm going to say here this evening, I very strongly recommend that you be action oriented. If you can be the kind of person who does, not who listens, not who talks about, but the person who does, your life is definitely going to make a change for the better. So it's the beginning of the year and it's always a good time to take stock of your life. And remember we had said you have a pen and a, uh, uh, a notepad. I would recommend that at this time you write down two things that you're very proud of yourself. I want us to start with the positive. Write down two things of which you are very, very proud. And then write two things that you need to forgive yourself for. Write two things that you, you're very proud of and two things that you need to forgive yourself for. And then write down one thing that you want to achieve in your life or die trying. Write one thing you would like to have. Would you like to be a millionaire? Would you like to achieve great health? Would you like to drop some kilos? or gain some kilos. Okay, I'm not wired to even understand that, but these people who have the opposite problem, these people who would like to gain some weight. I used to go to the gym with someone who actually wanted to gain weight. And we used to say to each other, if we would just, if we could just swap, both of us would go back to work and not have to do this. But whatever it is that is your goal, write it down. I'm just going to take a minute to check the chat while you do that. I have been at this a while. I'll just stop the share there for a minute. Oh, I see quite a few people have joined us while I was talking. It's very, very good to have all of you. I'm just checking the chat while you write those down. Write down in your notepad. Um, I see some questions here. I will go through those at the end. I see a lot of people have put their name and email address. For those of you who joined as you are going along, I had said, please give me your name, give me your WhatsApp number and your email address. I'm going to get in touch with you. I'm going to send you a link to download my book, Play to Win, absolutely free of charge. as just my way of saying thank you for this, uh, for attending this. I see some people have put some messages directly or in the chat. If you don't want to put your email address here where it's in by everybody, you can just hit a uh, direct message and just send that to me or to Val. There's Val here on the call and that's my assistant. You can, um, you can message me or you can message Val. We will be able to get those. So I'm just doing this as I, I was just seeing if there's something urgent there. As you write down, Two things that you're very proud of as the year begins. Two things that you need to forgive yourself for. All of us have done things we're not proud of, things we would undo if we had the opportunity. So write down two things you're very proud of, two things you would like to undo, and one thing which you must achieve in your lifetime. Nice to see you there, Jane. I see Jane is on camera there. Jane, very, very good to see you. All right. Let me go back to my shared screen so that we can carry on. I'm sure you have written that this is very personal to you. Very, very personal to you. There are not two people who have the same goals. Everybody has things that are personal to them, things that make you tick. What is it that you would want to achieve before you get out of planet Earth? Now, there are four things that I have learned as I have gone through my journey. And the first one I have referred to already, I have said that you have to take full responsibility. You have to take full responsibility. In other words, things don't happen. Things are made to happen. Here on planet Earth, things are made to happen. Everything you ever see happening, it's being made to happen. Things don't happen by mistake. They just are made to happen. So whatever it is that I would like to achieve, I will have to do it. It will not happen to me. I will have to do it. And then you're going to have to make a 
total lifestyle change. Whatever it is that is your itch, whatever it is that is your discomfort, your problem, it has been caused by your lifestyle, by the things you have been doing. So the only way that you're going to be able to change that is if you make a total lifestyle change. In other words, you turn 180 degrees and walk in another direction. Quit trying to find shortcuts. Remember I said I was in a gym for years and years and years, and I kept on saying, no, 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 I will eat what I want and I will lose weight because I'm coming to the gym. It doesn't happen. There are no quick fixes. Don't look for them. I'll tell you free of charge that there are none. And then the other one is you want to change your circle. You want to upgrade your company. You want to hang out with people. There's a teacher of mine who says, spend time with people who make you stand on tiptoe. Hang out with people who make you stand on tiptoe. If, if you're my friend on Facebook, then you'll know that I have recently taken up golf and I'm learning and I have a lot of friends who are golfers and those people make me stand on tiptoe. I have a friend, they are, they're in a group and they are golfing and their goal is to golf in 50 countries. Those are people who are making enough money. They want to play golf in 50 different countries. Those are people who make me think, oh my goodness, I have to make more money. I have to do better. You want to hang out with people who make you uncomfortable. Don't hang out. If you're the biggest fish in your pond, you need to change ponds. It's okay if you're teaching this group, but that can't be the group that you're with. When I was growing up, we used to call them village stars. Don't hang out with people from your village because you're the one who comes from Nairobi. You're the one who looks posh among them because that doesn't challenge you to grow. That does not challenge you to grow at all. All. So change your circles because you will not get different results doing the same thing. There's things that people will say just in a conversation, but there will be things that will really, really change you. I remember at one point I used to be in the company of a very wealthy guy and I wanted to learn from him. And this is one thing he, he said that stayed with me. He said, this is the recipe of a poor person. If you ever want to prepare to, 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 to create a Popper, you want to create a poor person, this is the recipe, give them money. And he was saying this to refer to his children because he had just thrown out his child. He had come from abroad, he had studied for a long time. And when he got home, the first thing their parents did was to throw him out, hey, get out. Do not come back here. They lived on a huge property in a very leafy suburb in Nairobi and they had five acres on them. So the son of course assumed, that, hey, I'm going to build in my father's, on my father's property. And the father said, no, get out. Do not come back here without a title deed. On the day you come with a title deed, I'll allow you to build on this property. But I need anywhere in the Republic of Kenya, buy some property and come back. I learned a lot from that guy because he was saying that if I give him, if I give him, he will never learn to make his own. I thought that was value, that was wisdom. So if you're going to hang out with people like that, they're going to teach you, you're going to learn a lot of things from them. That was something that was said in an odd conversation, but it made a mark on me. That was years and years ago, but I still remember it. In other words, the things that will be said in your circle will be things that will be said casually, but there are things that will improve the person that you are. So you want to spend time with people who make you stand on tiptoe. Tip and then fourthly and most importantly, you want to be humble enough to be teachable. You want to be teachable. These things, the first, the first time I had you probably heard me say this before, I say it a lot, that I caught the, 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 the concept of being teachable from John Maxwell, who teaches on leadership. And again, that was years and years ago. And he talked about Samson from the Bible. And he said Samson lost his teachable spirit because he made the same mistake over and over. He was told, Don't marry a girl from this community. He married one. He was hurt. He, would, he went and married another one. He was hurt. A lot of times when you hear the story of Samson, you think Delilah was the first woman he married. He, she was not. She was almost the third from the same, same community that was the enemy country. He had lost his teachable spirit. So if I'm not where I'd like to be, there's obviously something I'm doing wrong. So I need to be humble. I need to be teachable. I need to allow someone to hold my hand. I see someone has uh, unmuted. Kindly, if you can stay mute, if we just put the comments in the chat, that will help us to manage our time better. I am almost done and we'll go into Q&A. So if this is you, if any of what I have been discussing has, um, has caught your attention, if that is something you'd like to hear from. Eunice, it's very good to see you from all the way in West Africa. I need to find the person who is unmuted because they're been tapping us. Yes, I think that was the one I've managed to 
to mute them back. So if any of what I have said has struck a nerve with you, if that's something that, you, that gets your attention, then you might want to hear what I have to share here because this is the very, very first time I'm doing this. I have never done this before, but I'm offering the play to be online. That is an online program. I have prepared, I have not done this at all. This is the very, very first time where I'm doing a play to win online program. I have taught a lot out of the book play to win, but it's the very first time that I'm offering this program online. It's going to be 12 modules, 12 modules that are going to be offered within six weeks. So we are going to be having classes twice a week uh, on Zoom like we are doing this evening. We're going to have two classes every week on Monday and on Thursday. Uh, and then we are going to also have a one-on-one -on -one session with me, but I'm only, only in the first cycle of this training am I going to offer uh, the one-on-one -on -one session. I don't know if you watch movies or you watch series. I usually will only ever want the first episode like one of my favorite movies is oceans 11 and there's an ocean 12 and 13 but my favorite is the first one in any series i always say the first episode is always the best that's the, so this is going to be that this is going to be it for this series the it's only the first uh cycle of this program am i going to be able to 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 do the one-on-one -on -one session because i have other programs going on i'm not going to be able to make the time depending on how many people i'm actually not looking for many people this is a group coaching sort of program where we are going to be learning and interacting with each other so the smaller and tighter the number the better so i'm not looking to sign up a lot of people so 12 modules that are going to run over six weeks we are starting the first one in the first week of um February, the first class, I think, will be on the 3rd. It's going to be on the 3rd of February. The first class will be on 3rd of February. That is when we're going to start the first one. It'll be at 7 p.m. East African time on the 3rd of February. So what do you get on this program? First of all, you're going to get the entire, everybody already has Play to Win. If you have joined later, I said I was going to put you a link to download the book play to win i'll give you this everyone who is already on this already qualifies for that ebook i will give you that but when you join the program i'm going to give you the audiobook play to win also comes with an audiobook so i'm going to send you the audiobook so that then you're going to be able to play it if you're like me i very rarely read books anymore i tend to consume books in the way of audiobooks so that way i'm able to play them as i'm driving i'm able to play them as i'm working out as i'm doing other things so i'm going to offer you the the play to win audiobook. I've just remembered a funny incident when I first, when I first did the play to win audiobook, it came in a CD. And I remember it got stuck in my parents' car. The, the, the CD was no longer coming up. Whenever they started the car, they were listening to the audiobook. I've just remember that an incident that was funny. My parents kept on telling me, hey, we, are, we would drive around and you're here in the car talking to us as we do it. Uh, okay, so I'll offer you that audiobook as uh, part of the benefit of being on the, on the online program. And then there will be the Play to Win workbooks, there's 10 of them. There'll be 12 uh, live classes, 10 of which we go through the work. It's growing. So can you the other one? Oh dear, oh dear. I have to. I have to. I have to. Benta, that is the second time I've had to mute you. The next time I'll just remove you from this meeting. Please do not unmute yourself. I'm just winding up and going into Q&A. That gets very disruptive. All right, uh, let's go on also on this program. So there will there'll be the 12 live classes. There will be the one-to-one -one sessions with me. Uh, this is where you're going to be able to turn your attention within. A lot of the times we think that our problems are outside of us, they are inside of us. That is the one thing that I have learned. Remember, in the two examples that I gave in my own life, I finally found a solution when I looked within, when I tuned into myself, when I tuned into the spirit, when I heard the still small voice. That is when I was able. So we are going to be able to be learning how it is that you can individually learn how to go into the silence, how to tune into your, into yourself, because I promise you that the solution 
the, the one speaker put it this way, the door to your solution does not open outward, it opens inwards. And so that is what I'm going to be teaching during this program. You're going to be able to become your true and authentic self. When I say allow yourself to want what you want, sometimes we don't even know what we want. We have lived all our lives, and that is true of us ladies. We have so long lived our lives for other people that we don't even know what we want. If you want to prove that, look at yourself when you're given a few options. If you're given a menu with more than five options, you almost ask, what do you recommend? Because you're not used to making choices. You're not, you don't even know what you want. A lot of us ladies, if you are to ask us, what's your favorite thing? We don't know because we have lived our entire life for others. We have been giving of ourselves so much that we don't know who our authentic self is. That's what we are going to be finding out during this program. You're going to be able to break out of the mold. You're going to be able to think out of the box. We are at an age, ladies and gentlemen, where you can create a career of almost anything. I've had of very odd careers in this season. I've heard of a guy who makes his living whistling. Absolutely anything which you take for granted will be your gift, will be what you can do to improve the area of your life that you want to improve. So we are going to be talking about how to build your ideal life, not what others want from you, not what your mom wanted you to be, not what your neighbors are doing, but your own ideal life. We're going to be talking about how can you build your ideal life? How can you achieve your lifetime goals? How can you live by what I like to call your unfair advantage? That is what is going to come to you if you join this program. Like I said, it's going to be running over six weeks. Now, the value of this program is $1,170 because if you value the 12 classes online, that will be about $600. An audiobook has a value of $50 ebook value of $20, membership to the Play to Win community because we are going to be forming the community of Play to Win where you can interact with other like minds. And the value of that is 500. If you total all of that, it comes to $1,170, but the program will be offered at $500. The cost of this program is $500, but for the Alibad, for this first session, I'm going to offer this class at just $250. I'm going to be offering this class at $250. And so this is the time for you to jump in. Uh, I'm just about to open up for any questions, but the class that I'm offering is going to be for just $250. And so to sign up for the program, you can drop me an email, Christine at softskills.co.ke. Softskills is one word, .co.ke. All the uh, payment methods are acceptable. You can do a bank transfer, you can do a PESA, you can pay by card, or you can do a check to Soft Skills Limited. The logistics of how we can do that, we, we are able to deal with that. And like I said, Val is on this call. There is someone who is scratching my presentation. If you can please not do that, I'll be very, very grateful because then that stays permanently on the on the on the on my PowerPoint. If you can please not do that, I'll be very happy. So there, that's it. That's uh, the detail of the program. I want to close with this before I open up for questions. I had wanted to do this in an hour, and I've actually managed to do this in one hour. Uh, we judge ourselves by our intentions, but life judges us by our actions. So it's not what you intend to do. The results in your life are going to be about what you actually do. Because a lot of us are very well-meaning, but we don't end up acting. So this is the point at which I'm going to close the, the share and I'm going to invite any questions that you have. Thank you so much for staying the time. There you are, Tomogol, I haven't seen in a long time. How are you? Very, very good to see you, Joyce. Oh, there were a lot of familiar people here. I didn't see any of you. Clive, very good to see you. I see a lot of very familiar faces here. It's very, very nice of you to join. I'm looking through the chat at this point to see if there are any questions to answer. All right, how can I know my purpose? I am past 40. That is a very, very good question. That's a very, very good question. We, we are going to be able to go into, into uh, the details of that in the class. We're going to be able to go through the details of that in the class. I'm going to be able, like I said, to do a one-on-one -on -one with everyone. 
so that I'm able to give you guidelines. But uh, in summary, you will usually, um, okay, let me give you a summary and that will be found in chapter two of the book, Play to Win. No, I think it'll be chapter three. Uh, I give three questions you can ask yourself, four actually, four questions that you can ask yourself to find your gifting, to find your area of passion. And a lot of the times you will find that uh, your purpose will be related to your gifting, to your talent, to what I like to refer to as your unfair advantage. And the first question to ask yourself is what do you do for free? There's a lot of things we do for money which we wouldn't do for free. There is things you like doing, you enjoy doing, things you volunteer to do, things you find effortless to do. That will usually point you to your area of unfair advantage. What do you naturally gravitate to? What do you do with your free time? So that if I leave you, if you have time on your hands, you're naturally going to gravitate to that thing. That's another question that would lead you to your area of unfair advantage. Another question to ask yourself is what have people complimented you for doing? A lot of times familiarity, remember, breeds contempt and therefore you may not know your gifting because you're very familiar with it. You've been with it all of your life. And so it's not something that you quote unquote respect, but other people will point it out to you. I know a lady who started an interior decorating business because people kept com complimenting her. People kept complimenting her on how well her house looked and she ended up opening a business in interior management. And then fourthly, what did you get in trouble for as a child? Those are questions you can ask yourself that will point you to what your area of strength is, what your area of gifting is. And it is usually around your area of gifting that your purpose is going to be. So I hope that answers your question. We can go into the details of that in the class. Okay, let me see if there's another question that I need to address. I see a lot of you have given your name and email address. If you joined late, the people have put their names and email addresses here so that then I will send them a link to, to download the book Play to Win. I'm looking at a lot of email addresses. Christine, you're looking good as always. Thank you so much. Okay, that's a compliment, not a question. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Judy, if you can still please stay mute, that will help. Unless you're unmuting yourself to ask the question, actually right now it would be okay to unmute yourself if you want to ask a question. Um, what if you have no goal? Is there anything you like or don't like? I don't think I would be able to help you if you have no goal, but I find it very difficult to believe that you don't have a goal. Maybe I don't understand your question. There, there must be something you're looking to attain. I'm very, very sure that there is something you're looking to attain. I don't, maybe I don't understand the question if you can put it another way. I'm not very sure that I understand that question. Kindly advice on how to commit to reading, especially motivational and inspirational materials. I have a very busy schedule and so I don't manage. Grace, that's a very, very good question. A lot of times you might not manage to read physically, but the beauty of technology is now most of the good books that you want to read anyway also come in, um, in audio format and therefore you can play them while you do other things. While you're walking, while you're working out, while you're cooking, while you're going to bed, you can always find time. But I can promise you that you always find time for the things that are important for you. It is advisable that you spend at least one hour of your day growing your brain. That's where this is what makes it so. We spend all our energy and our time feeding our stomach and yet it's our brain that creates everything. So be intentional and deliberate. Carve out half an hour. I'm sure you can find half an hour to at least play an audio book. Even as you play, you could play it as you wash the dishes, you could play it while you're driving. Most of us commute. At least there's some kind of commuting that you do. Maybe you drop the children in school, maybe you drive to the office, maybe you take a bus. Whatever it is that you're doing, I am very sure that there is some time when you can play something. And nowadays we are all holding a phone. It's doable if you do the audiobook version, Grace. So I hope that helps you. I'm scrolling down to see if there's any other question. Okay, the one on purpose I answered already. How do I hands, ha, handle my cold feet and jump? Okay, uh, Rose, what I can say to help you is this. Courage is not when you don't feel the fear. Courage is when you feel the fear and do it anyway. 
I was very, very nervous about doing this presentation. I did not want to talk about myself. It is not easy. I have been very happy to assist other people. I have been very happy. To, and when I interact with people in person, that's easier. But to sit here and speak to all of you guys, some I've never met, and open up my life and talk about those things which I've done that haven't been so positive and so successful, that is never easy. So you will always feel the fear, but do it anyway. Take baby steps. But whatever you do, if we are if we interact one on one, maybe I will be able to help some more. But don't 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 ever wait for the right time. There is no such a thing. There will never be a right time. Just jump in and start. Take baby steps. But it also helps a lot who you're hanging around. There's people who encourage you, and there's people who discourage you. Don't have people around you who discourage you, who make it look harder than it already is. So you might want to to hang out with people who will encourage you. I hope that helps. This is great, sorry, I can't be on video, I'm leaving. Okay, that's not a question. Oh, <laughs> someone says here, Jerry is saying she was a gifted noise maker in school. All right. Having been a noise maker in school makes you a people person. It also makes you a communicator. So there's things that you can do around that. Don't look at it negatively, Jerry. It's a good thing. I like, I like the expression, I was a gifted noise maker. Insightful information, look forward to reading your book. Thank you very much, Kennedy. Do I coach new authors? Oh yes, I do coach people on how to get a book done. I am not, um, I don't, publish, but I can recommend a publisher. I do work with a publisher. I do give moral support. I have talked to a lot of people who have gone ahead and uh, and published books. So I can work with you through that, Shay. Uh, so get in touch. I'm hoping that you're going to be in the class so we can be able to work with that. Thanks for sharing. God bless you. Thank you so much. I see a lot of compliments. I'm not sure I see any other question. I think I have gone through the chat. Unless if there's another burning question, maybe you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question. Thanks, Patricia. Nice to see you all the way from Nigeria. Very, very good to see you. If anyone has any question to ask, now would be a time to do it. Otherwise, I'm at the end of this. Thank you so, so much for your time. Thank you so, so much for your time. Oh, it's very nice to see Dee. Dee is just joining us as we are finishing. But I know it's early in the morning for them. Very good to see you, Dee. Very, very good to see you. It's always special when I have members of my family here. Very, very special. So any other question? We have finished the official part of this presentation. It's, you can feel free to log out. We are just done. But if anyone has any question to ask, please feel free to ask those questions. I will stay and interact with anybody who wants to ask any question. Half an hour to feed my brain, thanks so much. Oh, thank you so much, Grace. Thank you, Grace. I'm just looking through the chat to see if I have missed any of your questions. But this has been a great pleasure. Thank you very, very much for coming. Thank you so, so much for coming. Asante Sana Tom, thanks, Jane. Thanks everybody for coming. Thank you very, very much. I will be in touch with you. You have my contact detail. If we need to ask any questions concerning the program that we are launching or any other questions, feel free to interact with me. Thank you very much, Joyce. Joyce and I have been on our program together. Thank you, Joyce Oweru. All right, I will just sit here. I'll be the last person to leave so that if anyone has any question, they can ask. Esther, you have unmuted. You want to ask a question? Gosh. Right, I think not. All right, have a very, very good evening, everybody, and a good morning from the people across the world. It was very nice to have you here. Very, very good to have you here. All right, I don't see any other questions. I think I will just close. Have a very, very good evening, people. I'm going to put this on YouTube so that then you're able to play it, especially for those who joined at the tail end. This is going to be on video. So have a very good evening. It has been my great pleasure to do this. Bye-bye.
Bye, Christine. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah.